So the slope of y equals x is 1, because I know that's what the slope is. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. This, and I'm leaving that as a challenge for you to prove why the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. I'll write it so we can read it. At least I can't read it. x n minus 1. Okay? And the next one says you can pull that constant through that derivative operator. So you can pull this c right out. And now this one says is that you can distribute a derivative. So it's f prime plus or minus g prime. You can distribute a derivative over addition subtraction. You can't over multiplication division. You have to have a special rule. Well, guess what tomorrow is? Special rule. The special rule. That's all there is. It's going to take two seconds to do tomorrow. Please plan on using the time in class for work time. Otherwise, I can shove more lessons together and have you do more work. But, you know, you're not doing that, so... Uh, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of a to the x is, you guys remember, a to the x times the log of a. I think it's up on my board. So it should be up there someplace. Some of them are up there. Not necessarily is there any, any uh, lines or any of that. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one for you to do, and you can work on your own. You can come up and work on the smart board, but I'm going to put it off. No. Okay. Halloween is coming. So, using the definition of the derivative, try to prove that. You need the binomial theorem. But you don't need much of the binomial theorem. And Pascal's triangle. A couple of years ago, oh, yeah, a couple of students did it, and they, they spent the whole hour doing it because they wanted to know why. And I can do it for you. Let's find the derivative of a to the x. Okay, Scott? That's Brad. No. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, his brother. Brother. I know. Oh! oh my God. <laughs> okay, what's the derivative of this? Who wants to come up and write the definition of the derivative of a to the x here? Vader does. Yeah. Derivative? Yeah, the derivative using the definition. Oh, no. Then we'll oh, it. <laughs> Never should have brought my puzzle in here. How to simplify that? No. no. Okay. Do you want to come up and do it? Oh. Okay, it's the limit as h goes to zero. Yes. It's a to the x. Okay, guys. Times a to the h oh, minus a to the x. Did it. <laughs> I have to give a candy for that. I've been for like two hours last year. Okay, guys. Yeah. Smarter than you. I was a sophomore last year. Just so oh. Okay, guys. Focus. Okay, this is the definition of the derivative. Then I'm going to come to here. What can I do with the a to the x? I can factor it so I get the limit. This is important. Of a to the x, and I'm left with a to the h minus 1 over h. Can I pull that a to the x out to the limit operator? Yep. Yes, because the limit operator only operates on h. It doesn't care about a to the x. So I can make this a to the x times the limit as h goes to 0. And then we need to recognize this. That's a derivative. See, that's the thing. The reason why I want to talk about this is because on the test, on the AP exam, you might have something that would look like that limit. And you're going to say, that's the derivative of, what's the C value? Zero. Because what's A to the zero? 
1. So do you see that this is a to the c plus h minus a, a of c, or a to, a to the c over h. This is the derivative of a to the x when x equals 0. So it's the slope of the tangent line of a to the x at x equals 0. Turns out it's the natural log of a. You could do it graphically, or you could do my little chart that I put on there, and you'll see that's what it is if you actually go through that. So what is this telling you? I just thought that was cool to say, oh, that's just the derivative, because I didn't see it right away either. And I've been doing this for 20 years. So it's not easy to see. There are lots of subtleties. I know that you think that you know all the A-B calculus, but even after five years, I didn't know the A-B calculus. And after 20 years, I still don't know it all. So there's a lot of stuff to learn. And remember, 60% of that exam is on AB. So what does it say about your rate of change of an exponential function? The derivative of a to the x is equal to a to the x times a constant. That's the derivative of a to the x when x is 0. That's just a number. I don't know what it is. So what's to say about the rate of change of any exponential function? It's what? This is just a number times a to the x. It's proportional to itself. I think I wrote that in the next thing. The slope is proportional to the function. So if you have an exponential function, you get the exponential function back. It's a multiple of the exponential function. And e to the x is its own, which is kind of cool. And there's a, and uh, you know, it's up to you if you want to do it, but there's an exploration that follows, which is right here, using your calculator. Write the limit form of the derivative using the definition, because then you can actually see why it's the log of 2. Find the value of your calculator using tables. Find the value of your calculator using n drive. And that's at 0. So this should be, what's the derivative of 2 to the x? It's going to be... 2 to the x times the natural log of what? 2. And if at x equals 0, the derivative of this is going to actually just be equal to the log of 2. So you can find the log of 2, find, use your calculator to find it, and you're going to use the definition of the derivative. So what's this going to look like? It's going to look, look like the limit as h goes to 0, and it's 2 to 0 plus h minus 2 to the 0 all over h. Because remember, it's f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h. I know it looks weird, doesn't it? Because that exponent is where the 0 plus h is. So you can put this on your calculator. You can graph 2 to the x minus 1 over x. Graph that. Use your tables and see what happens. If you want me to do it, I can do it on my calculator. Because I haven't done it. Actually, I'm not, should we try the Inspire to see what that would look like? I'm not good with the Inspire. That's okay. How do I? How am I going to learn to be better with the Inspire? Use it. I like the grass better. So while that's coming up here, these are the homework hints. So sometimes homework is so hard, I have to write up homework hints. They don't give that to you in college. They don't give you solution books either. No. I don't. We have to work together. And then you get study groups, you go and talk to your teaching assistant, and you get some help. I think there's two there. Oh, you have to finish your test. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the other row. Now, in terms of testing, if you're going to make up a test, please make sure that you get here. Um, the, the testing lady is here at 7. So get here at 7 if you want the full time. Make sense? Because it closes at 7.55. And then she has to repeat herself 20 times over. So at 7.55, you're done. OK, so we're going to do um, a graph. And we're going to graph. It was 2 to the x, right? 2 to the x. Where's x? I'm going to get used to all these calculators. Minus 1. I think it's a little more forgiving with the subtraction and the and the negative sign than the 84 was. And it's going to be divided by x. 
We might make that pretty print. And we're going to look at it. We're going to let x go to 0. So let's just graph. OK? And so look at that. There it is. Remember, this is the what? This is just the derivative. So I'm looking at the derivative of that function with the definition. So I'm going to look at the value there. So I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to put a point on it. Uh, let's, let's try trace instead. Because that doesn't always work for me. <laughs> trace. Come on. Okay, it's going to be icky. Ah, what happens at zero? It's undefined. But, and let me move this guy out of the way, if I can. Come on. Oh, let's escape. There, I can move that. And a table would probably be better. I want to get close to zero. Why do I have two points? Okay, that's getting closer. And we could zoom in on this. Let's zoom in on it, because this is cool. Because if you haven't seen this, I think I showed it to you. You want to zoom in on it, so three. And I want to be right there, so press Enter. And then I can zoom some more. And now I'm going to escape. You always escape, get out of trouble, and then drag it closer. Try to drag it closer. There it is. Look at that, 0 0.029. Not, that's not great. I would like to get closer yet. So let's look at a table. And I go under Menu, View. There's another way to do this, but I want to see my table, which is A. And there's my table. Now, how can I change my step size? Well, I know it's somewhere between a half and one. Right? I know what it is. Let's just do it. No, I didn't do it. How can I change the step size? Let's see. Table. Added table settings. Ah. Well, what would you like the table step to be? I'm going to start it. I want to start at zero. Point, point one, is that close enough? How about point zero, zero, one? I want it to be really close. Ooh, that looks better. 0.693387. So it's somewhere there. Now let's let me add a page. And let's take the natural log of two. Because remember I told you that was what that was. Calculator, enter, and natural log. Thanks. You guys know how to get the approximation. Yes, in your settings, you can turn it to this decimal, which you might want exact. So it's 0.693147, where, whoops, wrong one. That was my calculator. I didn't use end drive. I can. And I forgot to go back a page. And if you zoomed in better... We're at the 0.693. That's pretty close. Now, can I do that with end drive? All I have to do is uh, add a calculator, and I go to menu, I go to calculus. Those of you who have one of these, you might want to know how to do it. Derivative at a point. And I want to do it at zero. And then I'm going to do tab it to be OK. And then I'm going to put in the natural log of x. And that's it. Oh, wait. I want the derivative. Oh, no. I want 2 to the x. Sorry. Wrong function. 2 to the x. 2 to the x. I know it's supposed to give me the natural log of 2. There it is, 2 to the 0 times the log of 2. That's what it does for the end derive. And if I don't like that answer, I want to see the decimal, I do that. I don't know why it gives me 2 to the 0, but it does. 0.693147. Once you get used to it, it's 
you got to start getting used to it. The only way you get used to it is to do it. Because I don't have all of this. If I want to go back and look at anything, I can't. Nothing's gone away. I've got it all. That's what's really amazing with it. So you could try doing three of the X and see if you can get it to work. And that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, and then the homework is, oh, you do need to know this. Definition of E. It's the number such that the limit of that is equal to 1. It turns out it's 2.71 something. Do you recognize this? It's the derivative. It's the derivative of e to the x. The derivative of e to the x at x equals 0. Because when I do the derivative of e to the x, it's e to the x times the natural log of e. And what's the natural log of e? Who we forgot already? That's 1. So this is the derivative of e to the x at x equals 0, so it's 1. That's all it's saying. Finally, s is the position of your particle. What represents the velocity? So if s is equal to position, what's the velocity? BSDT. What's the acceleration? Do you remember? dv dt, or in terms of derivatives, it's the second derivative. Okay, I don't think the homework's that easy. <laughs> Honestly, it's not that easy. Everybody got a little handout here? Okay, I'll give you back your partner test. And a lot of people haven't taken the individual. But we can look at the partner ones. Thank